welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. The recent introduction of Alberta's Bills 18, 20, and 21 has stirred significant discussion and concerns among municipal leaders, not only here in the province of Alberta, but across Canada as well. Bill 20, which particularly has become a focal point of contention, with Alberta municipalities describing it as a, quote, power grab that could drastically reshape local governance and community autonomy. This bill has ignited debates over the extent of provincial control and the potential impacts on how residents manage and experience their own communities. Now, in response to the growing unease, Alberta's Minister of Municipal Affairs, Rick McIver, pledged to engage in consultations with municipal stakeholders to address their concerns and clarify the bill's implications before it was tabled on Thursday, May 16th. Now, today is May 17th. With that date of May 16th come and gone, it leads to today's episode. To gain deeper insights into the development since the introductions of these bills, and to understand the desired path forward, we turn to Tyler Gandam, President of Alberta Municipalities. Gandam's perspective will shed light on the current situation and provide a vision for how municipalities hope the provincial government will address these critical issues moving forward. This is Municipal Affairs. Tyler, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Um, Bill 20, we are recording this on May 21st, and I kept on looking at the news in case something did change by the time we did press record. But uh, the amendments that Minister Rick McIver said he was going to be doing around Bill 20 were supposed to be released last week. Uh, as of recording this, they, from from what I can find, they have not been released or have not been made public. Have you had conversations with the minister since Bill 20 was introduced? And have you had any talks about the amendment process that was supposed to happen? Uh, really short answer, I have not. We've, uh, Alberta Municipalities is sending Minister McIver a letter this afternoon uh, requesting a meeting prior to uh, the passing of the legislation. So we're hoping that we can talk about the amendments that they're proposing once we get a chance to see them. And then just seeing how this is going to roll out over the next few months. Minister McIver came on my show and he talked about how this this bill isn't expected to change much. It's just enhancing some of the features that are already in place. Now, you have called Bill 20 and in other media interviews a power grab and in a media release as well. How do you stand by those words in this context where the minister is saying we already have all these things in place already? I would say that if we have these things in place already, I don't know why there needs to be changes to the legislation and the introduction of Bill 20 um, without seeing the amendments. And I'm hoping that we see some substantial changes. The fact that cabinet can remove members of council, the fact that um, they can repeal bylaws. Uh, there's a few other things in there in terms of the ability to um, corporate and, and donations, campaign donations. Uh, we'd like to have a conversation about that. The affordable housing piece that was um, added to it as well. We'd like to talk about that, being that we do represent 265 municipalities. We have a pretty good understanding of area structure plans, land use bylaws, and what's going to work best in, in the individual municipalities, uh, because we have that ability to reach out and talk to them. And we haven't had that opportunity to consult with the government or Minister McIver on what that could look like. The fact that it becomes a perceived conflict of interest and a member of council can remove themselves from a decision is concerning too. It could be a very contentious uh, debate or motion coming in front of council. And now you run the risk of maybe not having quorum to make that decision. There are a number of things in Bill 20 that we wanted to have a further conversation on and just never got the opportunity to. Um, I would say, I don't want to say unanimously, but uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of the responses from social media I saw after Bill 20 was introduced were very negative about a few things, political parties about the bylaw overturning. I know there is one councillor who is in favour of Bill 20, so I can't say it's unanimous across the board, but um, from your standpoint, Looking back on the last month and a half, I can imagine that municipalities are in a weird spot right now of not knowing how to move forward on certain bills when a potential threat of the province can just overturn a bylaw whenever they want if they if it's not in the interest of the province, as they say. Right. And that's one of the things. So if it's a provincial priority, and that goes back to Bill 18 as well, for 
um, funding from the federal government. It needs to be a provincial prior priority. And so I would argue that if a municipality was um, looking for funding from the federal government, it would be in that municipality's priority, which would fall under the province of Alberta, which in turn would be a provincial priority. We've got over 300 municipalities across the province. Each one of us have different needs. We're unique to one another. And I think the ability to do that um, individually is really important, which is why I think members of council are so important in our democratic process, because we do represent the people closest to the street, to the ground. We know what our communities need. And from a higher level, uh, even a 20, 30,000 foot level, the province can see that as well and, and be a part of that conversation. But I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's in our residents and business owners best interest for the province to be deciding how a municipality is going to be run. And if they want to do that, by all means, we are creatures of the province, take over municipal government and, and make all the decisions. Bill 18, as you just talked about, Bill 20, and now Bill 21, which was just released last week, uh, seems to be aimed directly at municipalities in the province of Alberta. Now, uh, you and I chatted back in December of 2023, and I asked you in December what the state of municipalities are, and you gave an answer basically along the lines. They're strong, but there's a lot of issues that we're dealing with, along with infrastructure funding and grants as well. We're six months into this year, and it seems like the conversation around infrastructure has gone sideways, and it's not on the front burner for municipalities, and it's now on what the province is doing. Is this distracting uh, municipalities on what they should be doing compared to what are they're sort of being asked to talk about? I'm not sure if it's distracting. I think that infrastructure is forefront in all of our minds. We, we have to make sure that Water makes it to houses. We have to make sure that the wastewater gets away from houses. Uh, potholes have to be filled. Streets need to be cleaned. Um, and this is a reason that I don't believe that political parties belong at the municipal level. Those aren't partisan issues. We're not making decisions on where you align on the spectrum, whether you're left or right. Clearing sidewalks or clearing roads is, is a municipal issue. So infrastructure definitely is still top of mind, I think, in most municipalities. It always has been and it probably always will be. We struggled with the uh, funding amount um, with the local government fiscal framework. The, uh, the policy itself or the formula itself works, um, but the funding amount was significantly low. We were about a billion dollars short, and that makes a huge difference. Our province is growing like we haven't in, in recent history, uh, and it's going to take a lot of infra infrastructure dollars to make sure that we're attractive to people coming to the province or that we'll, we're able to take those people into the province. And that happens in municipalities. And that's why it's so important for municipal leaders to be a part of that con or conversation with the province while we're building our communities. It takes a whole lot more than, you know, what's just happening at that provincial or federal level. So uh, on that note, just alone of being in on the conversation. Now, I know you are uh part of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, who has been calling on the provincial government and the federal government to sit down with municipalities to address infrastructure funding uh, that is basically very needed for a lot of municipalities across the country. Um, and I know you haven't had a conversation with Minister McIver about Bill 20, but have you had a conversation with anyone in the province, to or the provincial government, to say we need to have this conversation as a group and not individually anymore? No, nope, not one-on-one, -on -one, not face-to-face. -face. Most of the conversations or the back and forth has been through the media. Really? That's how they're consulting with you? Well, I wouldn't call it consulting, but that's that's been the extent of the conversations had been through the media. And so, again, we keep calling on the province to want to be partners in this, regardless of what the bill is or what they're bringing forward. Bill 21, uh, Premier Smith had said, like, this is a no-brainer. We're doing this. Uh, it doesn't need consultation. Well, I would argue that if you are going to be partnering with municipalities, especially during a significant event like a wildfire, um, having a good understanding of what each is bringing to the table is pretty important. Okay, so I, where is this coming from? Do you know, do you have a sense from the conversations you're having, not only with people, even deputy ministers or even ministers or your local MLA who is a minister, are you getting a sense of where this is coming from? Or is it, are you, or is Alberta municipalities blindsided by these three bills right now? I, I, blindsided makes it is pretty 
pretty cut and dry. Like it's black and white. Um, we were having conversations about political parties at the municipal level. There were a few things that were passed through um, resolution at the UCP AGM. So the conversations had been happening um, amongst themselves in terms of what it was going to mean to municipalities. No, Alberta municipalities has not sat down and had any kind of conversation with the provincial government on what this legislation is going to mean to municipalities, uh, the impacts it's going to have. One of the things like just removing um, voting tabulators, the impact that it will have on a municipality and whether it's going to cost that municipality more to hire more staff to get those that counting done. None of those have been discussed with municipalities. So blindsided is pretty tough to say, I think, just based on the fact that we knew that the conversations were happening. It's just that the conversations weren't happening with us. What's the state of the relationship between the municipalities and the province today in Alberta? I would say strained. Again, not having that conversation, um, not being consulted with while they're introducing legislation that has such a big impact on municipalities makes it pretty tough to, <laughs> to buy into it. Minister McIver has said that if they get it wrong and they remove a member of council um, and it wasn't for a good enough reason, they're going to find out about it at the next election. Well, why wouldn't municipal councillors have that same opportunity that if they weren't doing a good job, why wouldn't they be decided at the next election? The province showed that they could remove members of council if there was something so egregious happening, like in Chestermere. Um, so the legislation exists. And if that's one of the amendments that's coming up, that's fantastic. But behind closed doors and cabinet making a decision that a member of council should, re should be removed because it's in the public's best interest, uh, I'm a pretty outspoken president for Alberta municipalities. And so does that mean that the mayor of Wetaskiwin has to be worried about his position because it might be in the public's best interest to remove me and then cabinet gets to make that decision? I think it's pretty unfair. Are you hearing concerns or from other municipal leaders outside of the province about what's going on in Alberta right now? I was recently in Saskatchewan, in Regina and in Brandon for AMM and SUMA, and these bills were just being introduced at that time, and they kept on asking me, as the Albertan in the room, uh, what's going on? Are you hearing, as the president of Alberta municipalities, from municipal leaders outside of the province about these bills and potential implications that it might be introduced in other provinces? Yeah, I was having those same conversations at SUMA. Um, people asking me what's going on, what's the legislation for, uh, do do we or should we be worrying about this in Saskatchewan? How how are you consulted on this being proposed? Uh, so the same conversations I was having in Saskatchewan, I think that you were too. And there's definitely concern. We're a neighboring province, and I think that um, they feed off one another in terms of where they want to be and how they want to be positioned nationally and with the federal government. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised if some of the similar legislation came out in Saskatchewan for sure um, for what's being um, proposed for Alberta. So what's the next steps? What's a tangible step that Alberta municipalities needs to take? You, you talked about the letter that you're writing, which is great, but a letter can go only as far as it can. What is Alberta municipalities asking of its members to do right now to make sure that these conversations do take place? So these amendments that you want to see actually take place yeah so we held a webinar about two weeks ago i think it was two and a half weeks ago uh, we had about 400 members online for that and we'd asked them to speak out against bill 20 if they thought so uh, propose some changes or express their concern with the government on what bill 20 meant for their municipality and if they felt so if they felt like they should um, pass a motion in council to rescind the bill as well and so I heard from a number, number of municipalities that were um, sharing their concerns and some were absolutely uh, passing motions to rescind Bill 20. So what's different, I think, about Bill 20 in this proposed legislation is that I'm not just hearing from other elected officials across the province. I was actually getting emails from residents, from Albertans, asking me what this legislation meant in their community, um, why it was being proposed, how they could speak out against what Bill 20 does. Uh, so it was pretty interesting to hear and see that uh, our messaging was going much further than just the elected officials across the province, which I think should um, highlight to the province that what's being proposed and especially how they're proposing it um, 
requires a whole lot more consideration before it passes. Now, uh, I'm going to just change a little bit of gears here, if you don't mind, because you, you only get you to sit down with you for a few times a year. So I want to take this opportune time because uh, later next month on June 6th to 9th, the municipal leaders from across Canada are going to be descending upon your province into the city of Calgary for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention. Are you excited to welcome Alberta, oh, so not Alberta Municipal, but municipal leaders from across this great country to Alberta? I am. We have so much to showcase here. Alberta has such a big representation. We go to FCM across the country. I'm really excited to see what it looks like here while we're at home in Calgary uh, and to be able to showcase what Alberta is and just how great how great of a province we have and maybe they want to move here as well. But yeah, I know Calgary's been working really hard on preparing and getting ready for hosting probably 2,000 or better than 2,000 people coming to the city uh, and showcasing what that city is and what it means to Alberta. So I'm really excited for that opportunity to see people from coast to coast to coast meet us here in Alberta. They're going to have to fly into one of the airports for sure, depending on where they're coming from. Um, and then, yeah, getting to see some of our landscapes as well. They won't be far from the mountains if they get a couple extra days to spend here. Uh, head off to Canmore, Banff, or Kananaskis. Uh, I know that there's uh, some other plans to delegates from across the country around Alberta to showcase what uh, maybe the oil sands are, some of the oil work that we're doing here, and how beautiful it is here as compared to what people would like to try to portray on what um, dirty oil looks like, which definitely isn't the case. We know that here in Alberta, but it's going to be nice to be able to showcase that. Tyler, always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you so much for taking time out of business schedule to do this. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs. If you can, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content that we have coming to you from municipal issues spanning from coast to coast to coast here in Canada. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engage, but your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last few years. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website or in the show notes today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.